Welcome to the third of a three-part video series on setting up materials and rendering and lighting in Maya. Um, in this video we're going to look at materials. Um, so far we've set up our scene and we've set up a three-point lighting setup and we ended up with a scene that looked something like this. Our um, three objects and looking all very grey um, and not very interesting. This video we're going to look at how we can make them look more interesting. Adding materials or um, uh, textures to objects actually changes the way those, those uh, objects react to light. So in Maya, when you're using the Arnold renderer, which is the one we're using by default, um, you'll find that the quality of, of the object is defined by the material that is on the object. A material basically tells the renderer how to deal with light that's hitting the object and how to reflect that light. If you select an object here and right click on it, you'll see there's a menu down here that says assign new material. And we can simply just select that and you'll get a list of materials will pop up on your screen. And you can see there's a bunch of different materials listed here on the side. A lot of them have weird names on them, um, don't seem to make a lot of sense. A bunch of these uh, materials here are all to do with the default Maya renderer, um, which we're not using. We're using the Arnold renderer. You can still use these. We can apply a Fong or, or a ramp shader or any of these other, a Blin shader to any of these objects, um, and that'll have an effect. But the Arnold renderers are more specifically designed for the Arnold renderer and give us better quality output. So you just click on um, Arnold here, like that, and you can see the, the subset of all those, um, that big list we saw before that is relevant to Arnold. So you'll see that there's a whole bunch of things in here that all maybe still don't make any sense and some of these are very specialised shaders for advanced usage. Um, the one that um, I'm kind of going to focus on for this uh, tutorial is this one called AI Standard Surface. And this is the one that you'll use as the base for most of the stuff you're going to want to do um, for, for simple rendering. So select AI Standard Surface and you should notice um, that you get over here on the right in your attribute editor this kind of preview picture of what that material looks like and also a bunch of um, information about uh, uh, the material and the properties of the material. We'll, we'll have a look at those in some detail in a moment. Let's uh, re-render our scene so we can see that and see what it looks like. So as this re-renders you'll notice um, pretty fast that our dog that's standing in the front which we applied that material to looks a bit different to the other dogs now. Where the other dogs are still looking um, like this flat grey plastic, our main dog here looks like it's made out of some sort of shiny ceramic or porcelain material. So this is the effect of the default AI standard surface shader. If we want to start to customise this, we need to change these values that are in here. And there's lots of different values we can change to allow us to do everything from simulating glass to simulating a uh, textured uh, ceramic or something like that. So we're going to have a look at those, but to have a look at these in detail, um, it's easier for us to use something called the Hypershade Editor. So we're just going to close our render window here and you come up to this little button up here that looks like a ball with a dot on the side of it. This is the Hypershade um, window and we'll pop that open. And it looks something like this. And what you'll probably see when you load this up is you'll see a, a ball like this on the side. This uh, shader ball here is a preview um, of, gives you a preview of what your material is going to look like when it's applied to an object. You can pop up here and you can choose different objects to have a look at it on. So for example, you could have a look at it just on a plain sphere if you wanted to. Or on um, a cloth. Or on a teapot. So there's different types of shapes you can use and you might switch between these um, or choose a shape that looks a little bit more like the shape that you're, you're going to be working with. Um, we're going to leave it as the default shader ball for now because um, this gives us lots of interesting angles and things to play with. Um, the other thing is that there's this sort of background image that's placed in there and the reason that's there is so that when there's reflection and so on in our, um, in our material we can start to see that reflection um, being actually in that material. So let's go through this a little bit and have a look at how the hypershader works. 
basically the properties that you see here are exactly the same as the properties that we had over here in the attribute editor. Um, when we change a property here, it changes the property over there. So this is just a shorthand way of seeing how our changes that we make here affect our, our material. Up over here, we have a series of, um, of different um, objects, and these are the different materials that are in our scene. So this Lambert 1 is the basic default shader that's on our uh, dogs and on our um, and on our on, on our other objects, so that's that's basically what's stuck on it. And then this one, shader glow and particle cloud, they're both just defaults that are in there, even though we're not really using them. And then we've got AI standard surface one here, which is the standard surface that we created when we applied it to our object. So this is the one we're interested in. You can see that we can switch between these as we click on them. These um, different shaders will be applied to our object. There's other things we can um, access through here as well, um, like textures, utilities, rendering, lights, cameras, and so on. But we're going to be focusing just on materials mainly at the moment. Um, the other thing you'll see in this window is a whole bunch of different um, textures and things down here, and a list of different materials, um, all of which we can sort of play around with. We're just going to leave this bit alone for a moment, and we're just going to focus our attention on this part here. First thing to look at is this thing called presets here. Presets are um, basically a way of saving the settings that you make here. So let's say we shift all these settings around and we come up with a new material. If we want to, we can save that material by clicking on the presets button here and we can save the um, preset in there. Um, once we've set the preset, um, once we've saved the preset, it will appear in this menu. Um, and this menu here also shows us a whole bunch of presets that are already been put in there for us. So for example, we can have a look at what, um, we, we can use these to, to just have a look at um, how that material would look on um, our object. So for example, if we wanted to see what this looked like with the gold preset applied, we'd go gold, replace all selected, and now we get this kind of like gold effect. Um, we could choose, uh, say, honey, replace all selected, and it will apply a honey texture. You now that looks black at the moment, and um, we'll have a look at why that's black in a second. Not very honey-like at the moment. Okay, so let's go back to, um, let's just go back to our AI, AI standard surface here. So we'll just uh, pop over here. And we'll just... We'll just um, apply that. AI, we'll just grab that AI standard surface back out of here. So we'll go um, into here, Arnold, shader, AI standard surface. Now, when we click on it through here, you'll see that we have this thing will appear. Um, and you can see I've created a new um, standard surface material here. It's this is standard surface two. Um, and what we're going to do here is this is this thing here is showing us basically all the properties and a kind of visual view and we can connect different um, um, we can we can create quite complex node graphs which allow us to connect different things together to create really complex shaders we're not going to worry about that too much at the moment a bit later we'll, I'll show you how you can use that to do something interesting but for now let's just focus on these properties over here so the first thing is, um, if we have a look at each of these, we'll just look at them one at a time. I won't go into too much detail on them, but um, just the main things. Base is the base color. This is basically the, the color um, and properties of the fundamental substance that um, is on your, on your object. Um, if you're quite happy with the way this looks in terms of its shine and all that sort of stuff, then color is basically the color that your object appears to be. So if we just change that to something else there, then you can see that that's changed the color of our object. Um, diffuse roughness is how rough that surface is, and you'll see that as you change that, it may or may not have an effect on your object. In my case here with this particular object with its properties that are on it, as we push the roughness up, it gets darker. And that's just because the light is being scattered around it more heavily. The metalness slider here, um, 
gives our object a kind of um, shininess to it. And you'll see that as I push this up, right up to the side, it becomes kind of like a Christmas ball with that really metallic shininess to it, where it's actually reflecting the environment more heavily around it and colorizing that reflection based upon the color of the object itself. Um, this weight value here tells us how much of the light gets that, that hits this object gets reflected. So usually, um, if we put this right back down to zero, you see the object goes black because that means that no light is actually being reflected from the base color. We're still seeing light being reflected off this because our specular and other properties down here are doing, are doing some work, but our actual base color isn't being picked up at all. That's why there's no purple in it. If we put this, push this all the way up to one, it means 100% of the light that's hitting the base here is being reflected back. Generally speaking, in the real world, most things aren't going to be much more than about 0.8 because very few things in the real world are perfect reflectors. So we're just going to rock that back to 0.8 there. So that's, that's your base properties. The specular properties are about this reflection that you see here. If we change our, our specular weight down to zero, you'll notice that all of the reflections go out of this object altogether, including that like, bright highlight that was on there. If you want an object that looks like it's made out of chalk or something else that's got a very matte finish to it, then putting your specular down to zero is important. As we increase specular a little bit, you'll see that this little bit of highlighting here starts to come back. And as we increase it higher, that, that amount of shininess on the object also comes back. The color here is the color of that specular highlight. So if we change this to something else, let's change it to green. You'll see that now this light being reflected in this, in this highlight is now green. I'm just going to leave that as white. The roughness is how rough this is. If we make the roughness zero, that light is going to be very sharp and hard. You can see that's a very sharp edge on that light there. Um, the reason for that is that um, you, know, you might, if you're doing a cue ball, for example, it's going to be like a really hard, bright, shiny surface. And so it's going to have that look to it. Whereas if the surface is more bumpy um, or more rough, then it might have a higher roughness value. So if you take the roughness right up here, you're going to get a look that's a little bit more matte looking but it's still got a specular reflection on it it's just that that reflection has been um, smeared out a bit so you can see here that it's got this kind of like shininess but it's kind of really it's much more diffuse shininess on it and there we can start to see that coming back a bit so you can see how this um, highlight here is just sort of brushed out whereas if I put it right down to if I put the roughness right down to zero it goes hard again Usually values that aren't too far on the extremes are a good way to go if you want realistic looking surfaces. The index of refraction here is basically how much of the light that comes in is, 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 um, is refracted or is bounced back. So if we put the index of refraction down at zero, you don't get any kind of specular highlighting happening off here. Whereas if you put it up really high, it's a really high amount of brightness of refraction on there. The default value of about 1.5 is about what you get from a sort of glass-like substance. Anisotropy and, um, and rotation are to do with uh, simulating uh, kind of scratches or grooves on the surface of the object. And if we put the anisotropy up, you may or may not be able to see it here, but it basically smears the light along a particular angle. So you can see that this um, highlight here is kind of following the contour of the circle or of the sphere a bit more. And if we change this rotation value here, you can see that the light is actually now kind of rotated to go this way instead of this way. Probably these values here are not things you're going to want to change very often, um, but there may be particular materials where you want to change that a bit. And the last thing I'm going to go into um, in any great detail is transmission. Transmission is used for when you want light to actually pass through the object. So, so far we've been dealing with um, completely opaque objects. If you wanted your, um, your ball to look like it was made out of glass or water or something like that, you would increase this weight value here. And when you increase the weight value on transmission, what you're doing is you're letting light pass through. So at the moment we're saying none of the light, zero light passes through. 
If we put this all the way up to one, 100% of the light passes through. And so we now get this thing where what we're actually seeing here is the way that the light is distorted as it goes through and it's refracting um, part of the environment around it. If we put it down to kind of, if, sorry, if we put it down to about 50%, you can see that there's still a purple tint there because 50% of the light is hitting the base and the specular and reflecting off it, but 50% of the light is passing through and picking up the background. So we can use this to create tinted glass or glass or other things. Again, um, as we come through here, there are other various uh, properties we can play with, and I'm not going to go into them in a great amount of detail. The last one I just wanted to talk about really quickly was this one called subsurface. Subsurface is um, a way of, uh, of, of simulating a kind of material where some of the light goes into the object, bounces around inside the object and then comes out again. So things like skin, milk, wax, um, uh, orange juice, a whole bunch of different um, objects in the real world have a certain amount of subsurface scattering. It means they're kind of semi-translucent. Um, the effect of subsurface scattering can be quite subtle. Um, if I, I'll see if I can uh, pull up something that, that, so we can see it. So what I'll do is I'll turn the specular right off, and then we'll um, go into subsurface here, and we'll turn the weight up high. Maybe not that high. Subsurface scattering, you're going to get this kind of um, noisy um, interference because it takes longer for it to render. There's a lot more calculations that need to be done with it. Um, and so that noise there is just due to the um, quality of the render. It just takes longer to get a really accurate render. You can see it's, it's working on it and it's slowly iterating it and making it better, but it'll take some time. The effect that we're going to see is a kind of sense of like glow coming through this object. Um, I'll see if I can uh, tweak some of these settings. So now we've got an object that looks <coughs> a little bit different to what it, what it did before. And what we're starting to get a sort of sense of as it, as it slowly renders is something where the light is going into the object, bouncing around inside it and coming out again. It's a more subtle effect, but it's really important if you want to get realistic skin to have um, subsurface um, weighting put on there. These other ones, coat, emission, thin film and so on, um, also allow us to tweak tiny little bits of detail. So basically the biggest one that's going to have an effect is your base and your specular, transmission if you want it to be um, transparent, and then subsurface is kind of like a small tweak, and these other two, these other ones here are even smaller tweaks still. If you want, you could have a look at some of the presets, and you could have a look at um, what the values that have been set in all these presets are. This index of refraction value here is really important when you're doing something with a high transmission value on it because the index of refraction will determine how the light refracts as it moves through, or in other words, how it bends. So water, for example, has an index of refraction of 1.3, whereas glass has an index of refraction of 1.5. You can actually go on the internet and find lists of objects like diamond um, and glass and water and honey and see what their index of refractions are and you can use those values in there to simulate them. Um, we had a look at honey before so let's uh, have a look at that one now. Mm, that doesn't seem to be working for me at the moment. It's not resetting all the presets in there. Maybe if I uh, apply the standard surface back to it again. Okay, so when we applied the honey before, we had this black effect going on here. Um, one of the reasons that that's black when we should expect it to be clear is because of this uh, weight value here is set to zero. If we increase that weight value, we'll start to see the, uh, the, the light flowing through that. Um, and we might actually want to change the, um, the color of maybe the scatter color here. 
You can see it picks up a bit of yellow there in the scatter. Um, and maybe we want to change the uh, maybe we want to change the color, or maybe not the specular color. Maybe just the color of the to be a bit more of a honey-like color. Still doesn't look very honey-like to me. Um, it's quite possible I am not changing the right values. In any event, as you go through these presets, you'll find that most of them will do what you expect them to do. You see that with wax here, we do have the subsurface. Um, we do have some subsurface properties set, um, and that's what gives us this kind of glowiness to it. Okay, so that's um, some of the basic properties that we can change here to um, affect a material. So let's uh, apply some of these. Once, when you're using the the hypershader here, um, you can apply these to a particular object um, pretty easily um, just by selecting the object, then bringing up the hypershader, or you can also um, use your middle mouse button to click and drag this surface onto um, one of your objects here. Once you've got it applied, you'll you'll probably see a preview of that uh, of that um, in, on your um, on your on your object itself. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to assign a new material here, and for each of these um, dogs, I'm going to assign a um, standard Arnold um, standard surface to each one. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it individually to each one because if I do it to all of them at the same time, I'll apply the same shader to all of them and I want each one of them to have a different shader on them so I can change them independently. Okay, so if I was to render this now, We should see that all of them have that same porcelain effect on them. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. They've all got that porcelain effect. So let's go in and modify a couple of these um, and change them into something else. Uh, let's leave our front. Let's make our front dog um, here. Let's make them make that one glass. So we'll go in here to its um, AI standard surface three, which is the material that's on it, and um, we could even rename it. Um, let's call this um, glass dog material, or let's call it glass dog surface. And let's go in here to presets and we'll just choose glass. We'll go replace all selected and just render that and we we'll, should see glass on that dog. Now it's, it's looking like black and obsidian like because there's no light passing through it. So we'll just pop into our um, transmission properties here when this is finished rendering. Actually I might just hit escape key to stop that rendering happening. And then we'll go into um, transmission here and we'll give that transmission, we'll pop that right up to like 0.8. And just render that again, have a look at how that's going. And you can see now that the light's passing through that dog, it's a more kind of dramatic thing to see. Okay, great. So that's looking pretty good. So let's um, apply a, um, let's leave this dog here as just that porcelain effect. And let's uh, change um, this dog here to have, maybe this dog here to be chrome. All right, so we're gonna select this guy. And again, we're just gonna use one of the presets. There's a chrome preset in there. We're gonna go uh, replace all selected on that. And if we render that, we should see a 
chrome dog in the background there. And then finally, with this other dog here, let's do something a bit more interesting. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to go to the um, hypershade again. And in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is our standard Surface 2 which is on our, um, nope that's not the one that's on our dog. I'm going to go in here and delete those. And it was standard Surface, I better go in and check what we had on our dog. So this one is standard Surface 6. So we'll go and have a look at the hyper shader here. And this standard surface 6 over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, have a look at this as this is standard surface 6 here. What we're going to do is we're going to right we're going to middle click there and we're going to drag that into here and this will show us our standard surface 6 properties in here. Now what we can do is we can actually um, have a look at this base color area here and this is the R, G and B values that are going to be coming into here. So it's basically the, these values through here. Now what we can do is we can plug something into these base colors here where the colors are actually generated from somewhere else. Um, we can actually take an image from a, a JPEG or ping file that we've got say on our, on our desktop and we can load the pixel values out of that and plug them into here and those pixel values will end up being mapped onto our object. But an interesting way to do this um, uh, would be to, well let, let's do that that way. Up here under the Maya properties we'll come under 2D textures and you'll see that there's one under here um, called file. So if you select that one and we have these two things will appear. So if you select um, this, this file over here, you will find that there is an image name property that you can see. So as we click on these different things, we get different properties over here. If you click on this file one, we can select a file, and I'm going to just select my dog front and open that. And then what I need to do is I need to connect my see how there are these connections coming in here I need to connect some of these connections from here to my base color so I don't alpha is like the transparency and color is so if this was a J, if this was a ping image with transparency in it there'd be certain values coming out of the alpha value there but what we want is the color and I'm going to take the color out of there and I'm going to plug it into base color so you can see as I move that connector over here some of these green ones disappear and only the red ones remain as things that I can plug into so if I plug that into specular color, then my specular color value will be set by the um, object. But I don't want that. I want it on the base color. So I'll connect that to there. And you can see that my dog is now being, that dog image is now being kind of like pasted on top of that material. So the colors that are coming out of here, instead of it just coming out with a single flat color, it's coming out with colors that are coming from our image. Now how those colors actually map to this 3D shape is a matter for another tutorial where we talk about UV mapping. But um, I just wanted to show you that it is possible to get colors out of a file and put it on an object. Let's uh, delete that file one and the place 2D texture. And we're gonna use a different texture here. We're gonna use a 3D texture. 3D textures are great for this kind of work because they're, they're automatically generated by the computer and they exist in three dimensions, which means they'll always work. You can imagine um, if there was, if you're in a cloud and you cut a cloud in two, you might see some texture inside the cloud. That's the idea around a 3D texture. So you'll see that there's one here called marble. So if you click on that, this is what marble looks like. Um, you can change the vein colors and the filler colors and so on. Um, and if we use this out color here is our input into our base color so we just drag that across into there you'll see that now that marble effect gets applied to our object and because it's a 3D texture it will apply properly to this object so basically what we've got is a block of marble and we've carved this shape out of it okay so that's looking kinda nice through there like that um, we could um, adjust our, our um, surface a little bit, maybe um, add a little bit more um, subsurface to it to make it look a bit more like marble. Um, but let's not bother with that. 
for now let's just come in here and let's just change these colors and make it look um, like some kind of jade so we might use uh, that color there for the base and we'll use this color here for the highlight color okay so we have this kind of green stone look about it we can still click here on our AI standard surface 6 and, and um, we could still change our um, our specular values maybe we'll drop maybe we'll add some a little bit of specular roughness in there maybe we'll also um, drop the specular value just a little bit okay that's looking pretty good to me at the moment um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close that down and I'm going to render this and hopefully my object here will have that AI standard surface 6 property on it so let's give that a go And there we go, you can start to see that jade um, effect um, on my last dog there. So you can see there's lots of room for creativity when you're doing this. One last, two, two last things I wanted to show you um, before we finish this tutorial. Um, one is that um, you can see that when the light is passing through this object, there's a slightly transparent reflection happening here. Um, but usually what you'll see when you've got glass or water or something like that is you'll get kind of concentrations of light and you'll get them appearing as little highlights in inside the glass reflection down here or the glass shadow. Um, that's called caustics and they're off by default because they take extra computing time to uh, render. We can add them back in if you pop down here into so if we select our um, glass proper uh, this is our glass that we had glass dog surface and if we pop down here to advanced you'll see there's a checkbox for caustics if you turn that on that will cause caustics to be generated now sometimes caustics are really visible and really obvious and sometimes you can't see them very much at all sometimes they're quite subtle it's just got to do with the brightness and the position of the light with respect to the object so we may or may not see them here and they may only really be noticeable if we um, compared a before and after picture with each other but sometimes they're actually quite visible so I can't see a lot and there's a little bit of caustics going on in there by the looks of things. But you can add that and you can play around with your lights to try and get that effect if you really want it. Um, the other thing you can do, I'm just going to turn it off for now because it's not making a huge difference and it is adding to my render times. Um, the other thing that um, I wanted to show you quickly was, let's say we wanted to put a checkerboard um, texture on the floor here. What we can do is we need to select our object um, and what we want to do is we want to apply a checkerboard material but we want to, don't want to apply it to the whole uh, room object because if we do that <coughs> if we do that then the walls will have a checkerboard pattern on them as well we just want to apply it to this bottom plane so in Maya you can actually do that if we um, if you select if you go into um, uh, face select mode and you just select that bottom face there, we can actually apply a material just to that bottom face. So we'll assign a new material. Um, again, we will give it a AI standard surface. But now what we're gonna do is we're going to, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to drop the specular right out of that because we don't want the floor to be shiny. Um, and up here where it says color we're going to click on this little guy over here so this is the same as linking that image in before we can now choose what sort of texture we want on there so I want a 2d texture and I want the checker texture on there okay so let's render that and see what we've got Okay, so you can see that this checkerboard texture has now rendered onto my floor there and the walls still have that default grey texture on them. 
And if we want to, we could um, change the colors of the checkerboards just to make them a bit more interesting. Maybe make uh, this one, I don't know. Uh, let's make one a sort of a pale green color and the other one a purple color. That's pretty ugly. That should work really well. And we can see it reflected a little bit more easily now because we've got a bit of color in there. And just to make life really interesting, <coughs> let's um, let's select our floor again. And go to its AI standard surface seven, and let's give it a little bit of metalness. And with that little bit of metalness on the floor, now my floor's got a bit of reflection on it. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's basically applying different materials to different objects, um, setting up cameras and setting up lighting. And we've created a much more interesting scene than we would have otherwise. See what you can come up with with placement of objects, placement of camera, use of different materials. Um, and once you've done that, you can add a couple of wine glasses into the scene. Be creative. Think about how you can make an interesting looking scene. And um, your first assignment will be ready to go. Thanks for watching.